Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I'm going to add some water fog so that you can't see as far when you're underwater. Alright, so it's Monday, but not the Monday after the end of the last devlog. I took a bit of a break from working on the project last week to make some progress on my improved networking solution and to finally get on camera. This means that this video will only contain a week's worth of progress, but before I jump into it, there's some things I want to mention. First, as you may already know if you watched my previous video, we hit 5,000 subscribers the other day, which I was hoping to reach by the end of the year, but we pulled it off 6 months earlier. So again, thank you to everyone for watching my videos and for all the support, it really means a lot. Second, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who left a comment with their suggestions for melee combat on the last devlog. The sheer number of responses was insane, and it was super helpful to hear about which combat systems everyone enjoyed the most. It's given me a lot to think about, and I'll definitely be going back and rereading all those comments when I finally tackle melee combat. Anyways, with just a few days to make some progress in this devlog, I think I'm going to work on swimming mechanics and underwater effects so that it doesn't look like this anymore. If I get that done quickly, I'll spend the rest of the week cleaning up loose ends. It would be real nice to finish everything in this 0.1.0 column of my Trello board in the next couple weeks. It's 8.30 on Tuesday evening, and for the past day I've been trying to get some underwater fading to work. One option was to simply change the density of the distance fog, but the problem with that is that it applies to all objects, whether they're above or below the water surface. This isn't an issue when the player is above the water, since I can keep the fog at its regular settings, but when the player goes underwater, objects above the surface should fade purely based on the amount of water between them and the camera. However, if I use the scene fog, an object 100 meters above the surface would be completely invisible, even if the player is less than a meter below the water surface. Instead, I've been trying to use the scene depth to apply transparency to a quad, which I'll stick in front of the camera. This works nicely for submerged objects, but so far I've got the same issue as if I were using scene fog. This is because the water plane doesn't write to the depth texture, because it also samples the scene depth to determine how transparent the water should be. This is how I managed to get the water's transparency to be dependent on how much water the player would be looking through. Unfortunately, because the water doesn't apply to the depth texture, the fog quad basically isn't aware of its existence, which causes it to apply the same amount of fog to objects above the surface. I was pretty much ready to abandon that approach because I couldn't think of a way to make it work the way I needed, but then I remembered a short video I saw from Unity not too long ago which was about renderer features. In the video, they used the renderer feature to render the player's weapons separately from the rest of the scene in order to prevent the wide field of view from warping the weapons. After taking a quick look at this renderer feature functionality, I noticed this checkbox for overriding the depth. I think this is exactly what I was hoping I would find, although I'll have to actually try it out to see whether or not I can successfully use it to do what I need. As usual, this has already taken way longer than I expected, so I might not get much cleanup done after all, but I'm hoping I'll at least have some nice water fog and swimming mechanics by the end of the week. It's 2 o'clock now, and so far I haven't been able to use renderer features to get the behavior I want, and I'm no longer sure it's possible this way. I've done a lot of messing around, but even though I'm overriding the depth texture after having rendered the water, it doesn't seem to work. It's almost like the pipeline ignores the way I've ordered things and forces the depth override to happen at the same stage where it normally would in the rendering process, which of course is useless for solving my problem. One of the biggest struggles is that I can't find any resources online about renderer features, so I'm not sure if that's actually what's happening, or if I've just overlooked something completely obvious. Without any documentation to tell me what I might be missing, I think I'll have to abandon the idea of using renderer features. The last thing I can think of trying is to manually render another depth texture instead of relying on the built-in one, but to get the result I'm looking for, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a second camera, which I'd love to avoid. 7.30 now, and I've made some progress. After spending a bit more time messing around with renderer features and different shader configurations in the hopes of avoiding the second camera, I had what is probably a much better idea. Instead of applying the water fog to everything including the underside of the water plane, I can stencil out the fog quad wherever the water is being rendered. This means that the quad that applies the fog is visible everywhere except for when it's in front of the water plane. From there, I can use the water shader to apply the fog to itself instead of having the fog quad do it. That way, I don't need the water plane to be included in the scene's depth texture, which was the main problem this whole time. I've also attached the fog quad to the camera, so it now moves with it instead of just sitting in a fixed spot in the scene, and it gets enabled and disabled depending on whether the camera is above or below the water surface. This works well, except for one major issue. 
Since I'm using Gerstner waves, there's no formula to return the wave height at a given point. The closest you can get is an approximation, but this means that sometimes the camera can be below the visible water surface without activating the fog quad. The reverse is also possible, where the camera will be above the water, but the fog is still enabled. The best workaround I can think of here is to modify the water shader to use the approximate formula, but I prefer not to have to do that. Anyways, as you can see, the water fog doesn't affect the water plane itself, only other objects. This looks really strange right now, but once I modify the water shader, these edges should disappear, so that's what I'm going to work on for the rest of the evening. So it's noon on Friday, and I've finally got the water fog working the way I want. The water plane is now also affected, which means it becomes less visible the deeper you go. However, objects that are above the water surface are faded based on the distance between the camera and the water plane, so an object could be 100 meters above the surface and still be visible, which is exactly what I was aiming for. I did end up duplicating the water plane though, which means the underside has its own set of vertices. Basically, the water uses twice as many vertices as before, which is why I decided to only apply this to the water tile in the center. In the future, I'll probably be making the water move with the player, so he'll always be in the middle of that central water tile, and you'll never get to see these ugly edges that show up wherever I don't have an underside for the water. For now, this means that if you sail out too far and jump into the water, it won't look very nice, but that will change once I've got origin shifting in place. If you didn't know, origin shifting is a mechanic used in many open world games where the size of the world is large enough that you'll run into issues with floating point precision when the player gets too far away from the center of the world. Essentially, the coordinates get so large that there aren't enough available decimal points to precisely store object positions anymore, which can lead to some really strange physics. To get around this, the player is often kept at the center of the world, and the terrain and other objects are moved around him. From the player's point of view, it still looks like he's moving around the map, but in reality the map is moving around him. Once I implement something like this, the player won't ever get far enough away from the central water tile to see the edges, which means I only need to duplicate the vertices for that one tile. Additionally, I've now set it up so that the camera's far clipping plane is drastically reduced when going underwater since you can't see nearly as far as when you're above the surface. There's no sense in rendering things that will just be hidden by the water fog. However, this is noticeable when looking at terrain in the distance from beneath the water surface because when you come out of the water the camera's far clipping plane is re-extended and all of a sudden you can see a peak that wasn't visible before. It's a bit strange to look at, but the question is whether or not players will even notice and if I need to come up with a better solution. Although I'm quite happy with my water fog, I cannot believe how long this has taken. I wanted to implement swimming as well and do a whole bunch of cleanup, but I clearly overestimated my ability to do this in a single day. There's two more things I'd like to fix up before I end this devlog though. First, the foam around the edges of objects isn't visible from below, which is actually kind of strange since I don't remember removing the shader code for that. And second, I'd like to change the harshness of the fog fade. Right now it seems to go from 0 to 100 over a really short distance, which makes it extremely obvious. It's a couple hours later, and I've fixed up the foam so that it no longer disappears when you're underwater. I also double checked my math for the fog fade, but everything seems to be in order. I played around with the calculations anyways, but nothing else looked much better. Most of the time it just looked worse. I'm starting to wonder if it seems like a very fast change simply because when you look at a flat surface, the distance to the camera doesn't increase linearly with the distance from the pixel at the center of the screen. Anyways, I wish I had gotten more done, but I'm going to end this devlog here. Hopefully it was still interesting to watch despite the fact that I didn't make too much progress. If you did enjoy watching the video, please make sure to destroy the like button for me and let me know in the comments if you made it all the way to the end. Also, if you'd like to join me on the rest of this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any future devlogs. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you back here with another video next Saturday.